Hello, and welcome to our podcast. We are That Weird Family. I am paranormal author Rebecca Patrick Howard, and we will be joined by my nine-year-old son, Sam, and occasionally by my five-year-old daughter, Iris. We are here to talk about ghosts, folklore, urban legends, unsolved mysteries and aliens, and all things paranormal. We are that family that stays up till two o'clock in the morning watching horror movies, who thinks that exploring abandoned houses is good old-fashioned entertainment and bonding experiences. My kids like cemeteries. We're probably not as strange as we used to be. It seems like a lot of people are into that. If you are too, then I hope you'll sit back and relax and let us entertain you for the next little bit. Hello everyone and thanks for joining me this evening. I am without children. They are staying with my mother tonight, which um, is only interesting or different than most weekends because they are spending the night in a haunted house. My husband contacted me a few hours ago and said the kids wanted to stay there Would it. What did I think? He wasn't sure. And of course, my phone isn't working. He was in an area where he couldn't access his email, so no answer was given. He finds the opportunity to get a free evening. He left them. Not by themselves, of course. They're with my mother. Uh, readers of my, of my books know about a house that we once lived in, a haunted house, that I refer to as the Maple House. That's not what local people really call it, but I'm trying to keep a little bit of privacy here. I referred to it as the Maple House. We lived in it for several years. It is to this day the most haunted location I have been associated with. Uh, and many, many bad things happened there. To the point where we're not entirely convinced it was ghosts involved. I, I, I feel like, um, you know, the Ann River Siddons book, The House Next Door, which wasn't a typical haunting, but kind of a vortex of really bad stuff and bad energy. It's kind of the way I feel about this house. It wasn't so much about what we saw as the things that happened there. Um, that's, that's a whole other podcast. Anyway, we moved away from there. We've since bought a home. We've lived in the house we, we bought for four or five years now. My, my, my son does not remember living in that other house at all. My daughter never lived in it. My youngest son, unfortunately, passed away in it. So all three children have different experiences with it. But very recently, my mother was given the opportunity to move back. Which, yeah, it's, it, trust me. You probably aren't thinking that's any crazier than we did. But there were a lot of benefits to her living there. Mom is kind of rewriting history, despite the fact I wrote a book about this house. The show Paranormal Witness wanted to do an episode based on this house, and everybody who knows me knows about this house being haunted. Mom thought it was a great idea to move back. So over the course of the past few weeks, she's been moving back into it. And the kids wanted to spend the night there tonight. So you can understand my husband's reluctancy to leave them there, but there they are. I'm nervous. I'm worried. We haven't cleansed the house in any way or had it blessed. I've done some personal things to our family, you know, into the house we're living in now that I'm hoping will be enough to tide the kids over until until we can do something to the Maple House itself. It's a really weird part of our history. It's a weird part of my personal story. 
and the fact that we now have another link to this house after all this time and after the things that have gone on there, you know, I'm still trying to process that and work through it. It's about all I have to say about it at this point. But the kids aren't aren't here. So when what you're going to hear of them in this podcast are recordings that we did earlier before they left. So I'm just sitting here with the cats. I've got the fire going. I'm watching a made for TV Whitney Houston movie on Lifetime. And I've been going over some of the ghost stories that I want to share. So I hope you'll enjoy what I've got planned for this evening. Um, when the kids were here, they wanted to hear some ghost stories, uh, some they hadn't heard before. And that's what I'm going to do with uh, tonight's podcast. You're going to hear me telling them stories. I think it's something that's fun and a little different, and I hope that you enjoy it. So here we go. All right, so we just finished watching the Mm. season seven Uh, premiere. Yes, Yes. season (laughs) season seven premiere of The Walking Dead. So this one was important because it's the one that started with the cliffhanger. You know, we didn't know which one was going to get Lucille. We kind of figured it out during the middle, be, right be, um, before it airs. So we kind of knew what... Yeah, we kind of yeah. knew going into it what was going to happen. I mean, we were spoiled a little bit, but I mean, also... Was it Negan said he's taking it like a champ or something? I mean, only, let's face it, only one person was going to be able to stand there and take it, and that was going to be Abraham. Uh-huh. And he said he is taking it like a champ, so we knew it probably wasn't going to be a woman. Um, Abe, not like one of our favorite, favorite characters, uh-huh. but... Funny? Funny, yeah, we, I mean, we liked him. Glenn, oh my lord. If it wasn't for him, it wouldn't even have happened. I mean, like, the entire Walking Dead one. Yeah, because Glenn saved Rick at the very because beginning. Because Rick was an, an, an idiot. <laughs> many times. Rick has been an idiot many times. So, I'm actually, though, a little upset at this episode. There was a lot of gore, obviously, yeah. which which I, I'm not big on gore. I don't mind it, but I'm not big on it. I don't like seeing somebody's head bashed in when I like that person. That is a little you know, too much for me. Yeah. What bothered me about the episode is that these are main characters. These are people who have been around for a long time. We really like them. We've gotten to know them. Their deaths, like, should have been traumatic, but I feel like their deaths were overshadowed by Negan. This wasn't an episode about them dying. It was like The Negan Show, (laughs) starring Negan, (laughs) written by Negan, produced by Negan. Negan. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, oh, yeah, and a couple of people get killed. Oh, I yeah. mean, that was like, yeah. a, and Carl almost gets his arm chopped off. But mostly, it's Negan. Negan. <laughs> I mean, you could almost see, like, you know, the lights flashing above his head, like the Broadway lights. Negan. <laughs> and I mean, dude has, like, the best looking teeth ever for the zombie apocalypse. I know. Has he been brushing his teeth? Uh, apparently, like, three or four times a day. I mean, I felt like our characters could have had a better send off. Uh huh. In their deaths, there wasn't really a point of this episode. Just two people dying off. There, there wasn't like a twist or anything. Like they get out. There wasn't a point. Oh my God, we're watching The Talking Dead right now, and it's showing Steve. Is it Ewan or Yun? In his makeup with his head bashed in, you can see his eyeball popping out. Oh, dude, that is kind of gross. Dude, dude, stop pretending to punch. Oh my us. God! Oh my God! And there's Abe, and he's got his hair <laughs> up, and oh, this is hilarious. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. I can't look at his eye. Me neither. That was bad. Let's not do that. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> um, Forget you. They're all, they're doing the Talking Dead in that cemetery with the famous people, where the famous people are buried. We should have gone there while we were in L.A. Oh, I thought there was, like, ooze coming out of, like, giant holes and cinder box. No, that's a fence. Oh. Dude, back I'm not on to- joking. I know you're not. Back on topic. Um, so we know that this episode is going to be the one that's going to jumpstart, you know, Rick getting people together and yeah. starting a war and stuff. I mean, honestly, why don't why don't they just leave? I know. Why don't they just get in vehicles and leave? I mean, go 
somewhere else where there's not so, there's got to be meet, somewhere meet that tiger dude yeah the tiger dude ezekiel uh -huh. yeah ezekiel. the tiger's pretty cool i'm just not really feeling you know the way this episode was done you said that there wasn't like a purpose to this yeah. there wasn't a purpose to the episode at all they, the last episode, so the season finale yeah. of season six. six, that's it, yeah, we're in seven. The season finale, they could have ended it with their deaths. Yeah. They didn't need this whole episode, and we all know the only reason they ended with that cliffhanger is so people would tune in tonight, because uh -huh. they wanted like six months of people complaining about it and wondering, oh, who's it going to be, who's it going to be, but I mean, honestly, by now, we're kind of over it. Yeah. I'm tired of talking about it. Uh huh. Yeah. Why shouldn't? Why is all the kings not saying like I'm King Ezekiel? <sighs> That's Sam's what? thing. He thinks like it's the zombie apocalypse. Why isn't everybody just declaring themselves royalty? I'm King Morgan. I'm King Daryl. I'm and Queen I'm... Rebecca, Queen of Urban. You know. <laughs> I, and I am Princess Carl. <laughs> well, I mean, we're gonna keep watching the show. There's a lot of people on my Facebook feed right now that's complaining, you know, and saying I'm never gonna watch it again. I hate it. I hate it. But I mean, obviously, we're still gonna keep watching because that's what we do. Yeah. I mean, we get mad at it. We were yeah. mad over Dumpster Gate when we thought <laughs> <laughs> when we thought Glenn was dead under the dumpster, but we kept watching it. Yeah. So there's not a whole lot of good things on TV yeah. right now. There isn't. Yeah. We're trying to get into Game of Thrones. We're going to start Game of Thrones. We've never watched an episode, but like there's so many seasons now, we can kind of binge watch them. We try and watch Harry Potter, but we think there's too much going on, like Lord of the Rings. Yeah, and I've heard that about Game of Thrones, too. We may It's we, like Lord of the Rings. We're a little ADD when, we get, when we're watching TV shows, so... We'll watch horror, but we won't watch... Like seasonal things. Yeah, our attention span lasts for about two hours. It's really hard for us to stay invested in a series over a length of time, especially if there's a ton of characters or a lot of plot points. Yeah. But we're going to stick with Game of Thrones at least through the first season and try <laughs> to figure out <laughs> and, <least. laughs> and try to figure out what the heck's going on. <laughs> try to figure out what's going on. How many seasons is there? Like thirty-two? No, there's I don't know. There's like six or something. I, I don't. I have oh, no geez. idea. Is this still going when on we, here? When yeah, it's still going. When it we is? first started watching The Walking Dead, I bought my husband like season one and season two for Christmas. I watched both of them in two day in yeah, one day. In one day. Well, we watched them all back to back, and then we finished the last episode that we had at like three in the morning. And we look at each other and like, well, now what are we going to do? And I looked on Amazon and I saw that season three was available on DVD. So we got in the car and we drove to Walmart at three o'clock in the morning and we bought season three and season four. Now, you have to take into consideration that Walmart is like an hour away from us. So this wasn't, you know, some run across the road. That's how invested we get in TV shows. And that's... At least anything. horror ones. And horror ones. That's why we don't want to start them unless we really think we're gonna like them yeah because we stick with them through the good and the bad all right well we'll see you next week and bye bye see ya <laughs> what we can complain about then yep it is halloween night and i am here with sam hi and iris hi <laughs> and we are telling ghost stories so i thought tonight we would tell the scariest thing that ever happened to us who wants to go first me. You? What's the scariest thing that ever happened to you? Uh, okay, Sam. You hey. want, how about I go first? Okay, you okay. go first. So, I have lived in several haunted houses, right? And I have written books about living in those uh -huh. houses. The scariest thing that ever happened to me was not in any of those houses. What? What? Yep. Was it in the school? Nope. Oh. Nope. It was in a house that wasn't haunted at all. So, my best friend, her name was Lori, and I wrote a book about her house called Two Weeks. Lori and I have been friends since we were seven years old, and this story happened when uh, we were, I guess, 11? Yeah, we were 11. We lived in Powell County. We lived in Clay City. I was renting a very nice house. Nothing scary about it. This is the one and only scary thing that happened in the house, which is weird since this is the scariest thing that has happened to me. So I had several people spending the night with me that night. There was there were around five of us. Robbie was there. Bobby Sue was there. Lori. 
Um, anyway, every Saturday morning, Nanny worked for the county. She she kept the records at the county wide basketball games. So every Saturday morning, we would go to the gym and we would sit there and watch like ten ball games in a row. That'd be neat. Yeah, it, actually, it was fun. Yeah. I, mean, I I I liked it. Uh, and it was fr- This was Friday night, so it was Saturday morning. We were all trying to get dressed, and I mean, when you're talking four or five girls in the house, we were. We were dragging our heels, doing our makeup and stuff. So, Mom got aggravated, and that would be Nanny. Nanny got aggravated and said she was going on out to the car. This house was only one story, but it sat on a bank. So, it's like you're in Iris's bedroom. You can't go out the window because you would fall. Like, you'd have a really long drop. That's the way my bedroom was. So we're sitting there, um, Mom's like, I, I gotta go, we need to go, come on, come on, everybody who's ready, come get in the car. So I was in the bathroom, and I was finishing up my hair and my makeup. I guess I wore lipstick or something when I was that age. I don't know why, I just assumed Lori stayed behind and waited for me, you know, she's my best friend. Mm-hmm. I opened the bathroom door. I start to, you know, turn to go down the hallway, but I I look in my bedroom, like I can stand in my, you know, Mm -hmm. in in the bathroom, and I can see my bedroom, and Lori's in the bedroom, and she's sitting in the floor by the bed, kind of looking at the bed, and I go, Lori, and she turned around and looked at me, Uh, it's just a really weird look on her face, like, I can't describe it, just a weird Mm -hmm. look, and I go, um, Lori, we gotta go, mom's waiting, and she didn't say anything. And I don't know why, at that point, I just got the strangest feeling. I mean, it, I was scared. There was no reason to be scared whatsoever. Lori looked like Lori, except kind of with, with the weird expression. I go, uh, Lori, we gotta go. She still didn't say anything. So I walk out of the bathroom, and I start to go in the bedroom to get her, and something stopped me. Like, like I was afraid. I could not take another step into my bedroom to go to where she was. I mean, I felt like something wouldn't let me go into the room. And I go, Lori, we we, we better go. She gave me this really odd smile. I had never seen Lori smile like that before. And I go, okay, I'm going on out. I'll see ya. We only had one door to the house. I made a beeline for it. I ran down the hall. I walked down the hallway, and after about a step or two, I took off running. I don't know why, but I felt like the devil was right behind me. I mean, I I never run faster in my life. And with every step I took, I felt like there was evil behind me getting closer and closer and closer. I ran down the hallway. I ran through the living room. I flew out the door, you know, jumped over to where the car was, and there was Lori in the car. She had been in the car the entire time. I don't know who or what was sitting in the floor in my bedroom by my bed, but that thing was not Lori. Never seen it again. Mm. Yeah, I told you, that's freaky, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> there are things called there are things called doppelgangers. Oh, I've heard about the doppelgangers. It's like in their evil twin. Right, yeah. Um, well, this is going to be exciting after Fifi get to play in the snow. That's true. You get to play in the snow after Halloween when it gets cold, right? Yeah. If someone walks through the bedroom and it looks like a you, it's a doppelganger. You know, they say that doppelgangers are evil twins, or sometimes a doppelganger is just a just a twin we don't really know what they are like if there's two people in the house and one of them goes like if it's a kid and the mother and the kid goes to school and like the doppelganger goes through the living room again the mom thinks that that's like her yeah like because it looks just like her right but then she comes home and her their mom asks why did you come back in and she says she doesn't and then they get in like to all this mess because um, they don't know what. Was yeah, in there. she does. She thought it was them, and it wasn't. It was from like a. Um, there was like American, the most haunted things. I get you. I got you. Yeah. I don't get you. 
Well, I've told several people that story and, you know, the most common explanation other than the doppelganger theory is that Lori and I had such a close, strong bond. A demon oh, well, went yeah. into her farm. Some people think it was a demon, but other people think maybe it was astral projection. That, okay, so astral projection is like you can make your spirit leave your body and travel to other places. Oh. Like, maybe Lori projected that. Maybe Lori was in the car and was thinking about me and somehow made her body appear, her, you know, image appear in my bedroom. Oh. Like, um, some people say that, you know, say a woman is pregnant and her husband is a soldier and he's in another country and she goes into labor to have her baby, but, but he can't be with her. He wants to be with her so bad. He wants to be at the birth so bad that he projects himself there. And as she's giving birth, she looks up and sees him standing in the corner of the room. Maybe um, she disappeared. Maybe she disappeared. So, Sam, what's the scariest thing that's happened to you? Um, that's going to be a hard thing. I tell you, I have to think. So, no mind. Sam and I were talking earlier about this. Have you ever seen or heard anything scary? Yes. What? Can you tell me? Uh, yesterday, um, I slammed on the door and I was like, ah. <laughs> yesterday, Sam slammed the door and you were like, ah. <laughs> that would scare me too. What is that about, um, slammed and slammed the door and, and nobody did. What if it was a ghost? Oh, I don't think so. No. I don't think our house is haunted, for one thing. Why did yesterday sound... <laughs> Whenever you see that it was a camera. Sam's goofy. Sam's a goofy butt. I just remembered a dream I had and my, I, I, my eyes started watering. Oh, yeah. Was it a scary dream? Yeah. Do you want to talk about it? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, I was in bed, and I was having a dream. I, And I got out of the bed, and I went to the bathroom, and same as you, I don't like to turn the light off. Then I went out, and I um, laid on the couch, and um, I looked behind um, the little couch, and um, I think there was like a... Um, a demonic being. Oh gosh. And then I ran into the kitchen and I might have took those like for some reason the spatula and I laid it on the coffee table and I laid back on the couch and tried to wake up and I woke up. I was on the couch and the spatula was right next to me. Oh dang Sam that is scary. I've got one. Okay you got one? Uh when I was dreaming about something, uh, I said, uh, Daddy, where's him? And he and he turned around, and he was in a scary mask. Oh, Iris has bad dreams a lot. When Iris was little, she used to call, well, she's still little, she's five. When she was younger, she used to call dreams stories. And she'd say, I had a story last night, or I saw a story last night. I feel really bad for Sam. Mm -hmm. Over the weekend, I took him to a fall festival in Winchester, and they had a haunted house, which is supposed to be kid-friendly. And I went, I, I tried to go through it with him, but in, they ended up having strobe lights, which they did not warn people about, so I was... Strobe ar lights give you a stroke. Seizures. Seizures. Yeah, I can't, I, I'm epileptic, so I can't be around strobe lights. And they only been going off for a few seconds, and I was already getting sick, so I had to leave. He ended up sticking with the other people who were on the tour who, you know, tried to take care of him, but it just terrified him, and he was scared the rest of the, rest of the night, and I, I felt... I had a couple panic attacks. He's kind of been having panic attacks since. Having mono at the same time isn't helping, but... He did not do so well after that. I don't like haunted houses. Mm -mm. You know, I can deal fine with the real ghosts. I don't like the fake ones. There's Hi. things I don't even want to talk about that was in that haunted house. You don't have to talk about them. Iris doesn't like scary masks or people in scary costumes. Or even pe two-year-olds with clowns. 
Hey, oh, clowns are spooky. Clowns. clowns are spooky, aren't they? Uh, so, what was that guy night last name again? Scream or Michael Myers? Michael Myers. Yeah. Michael, How's Michael Myers? getting closer and closer to you. Michael Jack. Myers. 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 Myers not scared me. No, honey, it's okay. We don't have to talk about it. Don't worry, baby. It's okay. One time when <laughs> me and Sam were here at the house by ourselves, I thought, um, well, we weren't by ourselves by ourselves. My husband was here. He was out back in his workshop uh, down over the hill. But Sam and I were in the living room, and we were watching TV. And then we heard this um, sound coming from the kitchen. And we, at the time, we had puppies. Yeah, we had puppies. It was what? really, you were asleep. It was a really loud sound. I mean, it sounded like footsteps coming up from our basement and the door I'm, shutting. I wonder how I didn't got to wake up. You were out like a rock. You were sleeping good. But I mean, it really sounded like somebody was walking around in the kitchen. And then we heard like this like sound coming from that white cabinet. Like something opened the door. Yeah. And took like a bag of chips and just slammed it. It was weird. I went in there and looked. I got like a hammer's some nonsense and went in there because I knew Pete wasn't there and I mean, there was nobody there. And I said it might have just been the puppies but all the puppies were in the living room with Asleep. Us. They were all in the living room asleep. Did that Including time Jake from Moomoo? State Farm. <laughs> what? Even Moo Moo was there. Even Moo Moo was there and he was asleep too. And Jake Wait. from State Farm. And Jake from State Farm. What else kind of puppies? Are just two of them? Ghost. One of the uh, no, that yeah, Woody Ghost was still was still with us. But I love that dog. So those are some of the spooky things that have happened to us. Most of them seem to revolve around dreams. If you want but us to I... tell more stories, feel free to comment down below and say it. Yeah, and we will share everything we've got. And don't forget to subscribe on my YouTube channel, Ghost Kid Sam. <laughs> and don't forget to check out my website, www.rebeccaphoward.net. Bye from Rebecca. Bye from Meow. Bye for Sweet Arf. <laughs>